but since the beginning we have a, a charter. We like charters in Quebec. We like charter. And uh, so. <laughs> that one, yeah. And that one is about if it's possible, everything will be local. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all a brewheads? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 138 of Beer and Other Shit, the podcast. This afternoon, we are in glorious Oshelaga Maisonneuve here in Montreal at Pierre Lug with the owner, David, and manager, PA. Gentlemen, thank you for hanging out. We're happy to have you here. We, I'm very thank happy you. to be here. Thank you. Are thank we lucky much. to... Can we say we're lucky to have you here? <laughs> I can say, can I even say I'm lucky to be here? Someone from Finally. Australia. An Australian in, here in Oshelaga. <laughs> All right. Are you the first Australian to be here in Oshelaga? Do you know what? I think so. I don't reckon oh, There's the Olympic Stadium here, so you were... Oh, uh, you know no, what? maybe not. Maybe that? not. When was that? 1976. <laughs> oh, 76. 76. Some might have come out then. But did they stay in... Is that technically Oshelaga? Yeah, they used yeah. to stay oh, at the uh, Habitation, yeah. just yeah, beside the stadium. The, 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 uh, so maybe you're the second. Uh, second. Yeah, there the was second, there was the second Australian. wave of Australians. Yeah, well, close. I'll take it. I'll take okay. it. Um, so this is a wonderful uh, depth in the here in Australia. You guys are selling everything across the board. We got like all the craft beers from Quebec across the Quebec, um, wines from the region as well, local produce. It's, it's phenomenal. Basically, got everything you need. Um, what are we drinking right now? Uh, that beer, I used to taste uh, that beer from Avant Garde. It's brewed in the neighborhood, Ashley Maisonneuve. They are friends of ours. And this is, I would say, a northern French Pilsner. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, the body, it is quite spectacular, yeah. clear. The no if you smell, we think, we think that we are in, um, uh, I would say, Germany or um, maybe not Prague or Czech Republic, but we know we are in a good Pilsner zone. Yep. So that beer is among my favorite I've drank in the last uh, few months. Right. I love cool. that beer. Easy drinking, and it's made in the, the neighborhood. Yeah. I love it. Boys, cheers. Cheers. Get in ya. Get in ya. Oh, That's great. And you have it all. You yeah. have the malt a bit. Yep, yep, yep. You have the malt. Yeah, the presence of it. So There's two type of malts, if I'm not mistaken, in it. And it's... 25%. Yeah, it, everyone can enjoy that type of beer as well. Yeah. Anyone. And it's got interesting um, strizzle. I've never heard this. Strizzle spots and mistral hops. Are they, uh, French hops. The French hops. Interesting. Uh, yep. So what, I guess, are they sort of like uh, similar to SARS in the... I'm not an expert of those, of those no, ones. I don't know. Um, but they name their beers the after the, the ingredients that they have in it. So right. those are French ingredients. And um, so that's why it's, a it's pretty accurate. Yeah. I love that. I know they I wanted to change at one point the hops and I don't know if we're going to see more of it. I know that one was just like the more popular that we had of that that whole bunch but uh they made uh, yeah i think there was like one american also okay. uh that they made so american pilsner french pilsner i think they're gonna maybe change the countries or i don't know that's so cool right? gonna i have feel to like the guys yeah you know, that, Sean. Sean Renaud, they were yeah. uh, open, it's nearby right yeah they're gonna open soon it's yeah. not open yet they're oh, canning so yeah. that's why we get those beautiful cans very cool uh, yeah they're great Small move. i like that i've seen a lot of a uh, rise of uh, italian pilsners recently maybe in ontario and, and in hmm. the states i've seen a lot so it's very cool to see like just slight variations on a on a, you know, a style that's really ramping up popularity. Right now yeah. it is because yeah, people are really. used for the last three years or so to drink hoppy beers. Yeah. And now they're back into basics. Yeah. Basics are uh, easy drinking beer. We used to drink La Bad, La Bad Blue. Remember yeah, that I, one? Well, do I ever. Easy drinking, but it's still, let's say, a, a kind of lager. People are back into easy drinking beer as well. So we can drink hoppy beers, but we can drink as well and enjoy, enjoy those types of beers. Yes. It's really cool that like, I feel like Quebec has been a bit slower um, in the uptake in the, in the craft pilsners. I mean, you guys would be probably the best to speak to that because you can see that as far as coming in. I felt that like in other areas, like in the States or in, elsewhere in Canada, I've noticed that there's been a uh, 
uh, bless you. It's it's come in a lot quicker and it's become sort of popular faster. And I'm feeling like only like maybe now, maybe like a year ago. Let's be really this about the history. In the yeah. US, you have a large art industry, a large German population. They brought the culture of Pilsner's laggers in there. Canadian as well, in Ontario, London, Ontario, or those this area south of Toronto, there's a large uh, German population as well. So they brought. That's true. And in Quebec, it's the opposite. Right. We are very, pretty much close to the French and Bel people from Belgium. Right. And with Unibou 25 years ago or 30 years ago, more or less, we were very influenced by the Belgium types beers, of beers. So we are maybe more European and closer to the Belgium and the British as well than the German in Quebec. Maybe it's part wow. of the explanation because here Germans not very not as strong as Ontario or Western Canada. Right. Same thing in the US, Pennsylvania is full of uh, German people. Yeah. The roots of the population. That's I think that's the best explanation yeah. I've heard thus far. I think it could be exactly what it is. And then I guess now it's just it's the the, the rise of Pilsners is probably because of the craft beer movement itself yeah. as opposed to some sort of historical connection to style. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so let's get into your beer histories. We'll get them done. So whoever would like to start, like how did you get into beer? How, how did the, what did that journey look like? Myself, I was 11, 12 years of age when I used to not enjoy, I mean, instead of collecting stamps when you're young, I used to collect beer caps and beer labels. Right. It was, it was, it, it says a lot. So when you have a beer cap in French, in Spanish, or English, whatever, you learn a new language by that. You sure. travel as well. So I used to uh, correspond with breweries around the world and beer caps ma uh, makers, companies who produce caps and labels or breweries. So I used to roll them in French, in English, in Spanish. So at the age of 11, 12, 13, I used to learn a bit of English and Spanish and open my mind to other countries because of the beer. So I, I got into it by collecting uh, that. And that when I used to, when I was like 18, I started to drink alcohol. And when you were legal, never before. In here it's 18 in Quebec. And I used to start with Unibrou, pretty much. I've, I've drank a bit of Mosin Dry. A bit. We all been there. But Unibrou opens the way to me from the beginning. So Unibrou, Cheval Blanc, it's among the, the, the first. Yeah, yeah. And then Boreal were there and Saint Ambroise. So there was the, the top four. So at the age of 18, 20, I was already uh, in the first generation of uh, microbreweries in Quebec. I was influenced by that. So beer labels, beer caps, and then a beer drinker and today I have a beer store because I, I love the beer the beer scene right it's vibrant today it's vibrant it was it, really is. it was interesting at that time to see something different happening but now it's vibrant as you know were there craft options or was that something that you were even aware of when you were sort of discovering all these different beers you know I think when Blanche de Chambly won the best white beer Blanche in the world Uh, so, it was a big there was big publicity about it yeah. it was a big thing people were proud in Quebec about that so I say it's cool we have maybe the best beer in the world no contest it's right. but it used to it was a, a moment a break breakthrough a, a moment that we felt oh we can do something good in Quebec especially in beers right. so let's try that beer and then we taste the Maudit and Fin du Monde and all those good beers still are very good today yes. and uh, it opened the doors to other to to produce probably Belgium types beers and then microbrew beers and uh, it was I think Unibrou were among the tops that influenced us a lot so much right. but not only as a drinker as a society to to be proud right. like the Cirque du Soleil brought uh, we were proud of the Cirque du Soleil and we were, that was important at that time that's that's really cool yeah. I like that a lot yeah. just before we get to the, the shop and how that yeah. came about let's do yours uh, all them, my story is a bit about a bit the same because I always love the uh, the labels like the graphics I love that I love I love never told me that I love the uh, no you always you already said it so he's I hiding to say things it again, to me now, huh? now I'm saying it for the first time sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's it's really he yeah it, it's the label I had I had like a collection of empty bottles but it was like all the different uh, 
uh, type of logos. If there was like a one little thing that was like uh, different from the label before, uh, I was actually putting it up there. So I could have had like a, you know, when you said Cheval Blanc, I could have like the, the, the Coup de Canon they, yeah. they made. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they had like different. Uh, uh, oh, the different variations. Same thing. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Same, same with Boreal. Like the the bear was cut off, and then it was like just a square, and then it was like circles. So. That's a pretty so had, like, cool. All, all the different yeah. ones. Cool. Uh, a bit like someone who collects like pennies and stuff, like or or, or stamps and stuff. But I was like going with all the uh, labels from uh, from the beer bottles. That's, that's, that's how it started, and then with I don't know trying out beers, uh, Chabat Blanc or Inibou were were the ones. I was always the crazy one, the parties that was bringing like the beer that nobody was drinking and yeah and just kind of had a legal bench of course <laughs> of course of course of course yes I didn't know that that I drank I like that team. no 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> they used to collect bottles <laughs> yes yes that's like a serious coincidence right now yeah but I think every, that's his reaction many, life <laughs> many people collect bottles right. I think yeah. we like that bottles are it can be very pretty it's a good yep. a pretty object and now we're the we're the brandings of the labels yeah. it's getting more professional so. yeah interesting so then all right let's let's go to the store so how did the when did the store open or when did when, how did what sparked the idea even to, to open up the beer store before i was for 13 years a north american tour guide nice. i used to tour people from belgium and france in north america Great. And people from the U.S. in Quebec. So I, I was on the road all the time in hotels. So it, it seems cool, but as an artist or as a tour guide or anyone who works on the road with uh, luggages and airports and it's hotels and cheap that. hotels, yeah. good restaurant, but cheap restaurants yeah. as well, it seems very sexy from outside. But when you're into it for 13 years and you have tour, North America, tour, tour, it's fun. But at a certain point, I said, how can I, my passion of Quebec, uh, the cheese, uh, ice cider, beers, and culture, how can I reproduce that as a tour guide in maybe locally or to stay at the same place? And I said my former girlfriend was very good into booking uh, books, books um, in English, how to accountant, you know. And I was good into talking with people and to see and design the boutique from the start. It was easy to say, okay, the cash will be there, that department will be there, uh, the, the bottles, when we return bottles are going to be, I knew how, how it's going to work. I knew it's going to be the right spot here in the, in the, in the district. It was easy for me, for the merging of our two competence together and to bring a boutique to the people, but the boutique with all the local stuff. Seven years ago, it was not that cool as today. When we say that boutique is 100% local. Right. Today, when you say that, it's very cool. It's very People cool. looked for that. Yeah, yeah. Environmental uh, economy, it's good. Uh, there's the pride and everything. And we know the producers, we know the name of who are making the beers, the wines or the, the food. So yeah, that's yeah. very cool. But seven years ago, to say the boutique is all local, oh, yeah, yeah. but today, it's a good decision. So it's, uh, it, yeah. it's a pride of the local stuff or the local culture, the local products that brought me to that business. Right. So this is essentially your way of anchoring yourself to one place and stop traveling. Yeah. It's easier. <laughs> and yeah, I live uh, like a kilometer from here. So, so when you're in Vancouver or you're in uh, Phoenix, sometimes you miss your bed. Sometimes yeah. you miss your food. Sometimes. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Absolutely. I totally relate to that. So And as well, you get to be surrounded by beer all day long and just good products good good beer and wine beer and no, wine no, and beer and wine <laughs> now we are into beer and wine and Can't food <laughs> and when did you join uh, uh, about three and a half years ago right uh, so about halfway through yeah yeah I was uh, I was a customer he right. called me the, the, the guy who likes stouts so because <laughs> I was always drinking stouts so yeah, I used to live just right across the street. Do you still only drink stout? Uh, or you? Well, not not today. No, not today. Okay. <laughs> if, if I'm, to, I'm, I'm just if once. If I'm to get a, get a great beer at the end of the day, I will get a stout. I, I went to Texas once and I asked if there was stouts over there. They looked mm. at me like like bizarre, or like what are you talking like, about? That's what really? How many years ago? Or what? that I went? Uh, I don't know. It was like two years ago. Yeah. Two, two, two. Yeah. Two years Jeez. ago. So it's like it's yeah, you were sort of accidentally ahead of the game. 
would you say? No, it was to me it was normal yes. to eat local, think local. It, and I've been traveling around the world. I'm very, uh, I'm very fortunate. I've been traveling a lot, but if I travel, I want to taste local food of the country I'm visiting. I want to see their beers, see their food, see their anything they made locally. That's why I'm traveling myself. True. So if the tourist comes here, they should be happy to say, hey, it's all local. For them, it's very cool to have a store with everything is local. Mm -hmm. So for me as a traveler, I'm not looking for things I know at home. I know what it looks like at home. I don't want to have what I'm used to it. I want to taste yeah. something new. So as a traveler, I'm looking for those kind of stores or experiences. So when they come here, they have the local experience. There's more and more people inclined to that. Like they, they walk yeah. in here and as soon as we tell them everything is local, they're surprised and happy about it. So it's really cool to, to have right. that. Yeah. yeah. As a traveler, and I absolutely relate to that, that, that that's what you do. So then you were like, well, eventually it's going to probably come around where... It's our trademark now. Right. But since the beginning, we have a, a charter. We like charters in Quebec. Quebec we like charter. And uh, that one, yeah. And that one is about, if it's possible, everything will be local. If it's possible, we're going to have um, our soaps. Oh, All the soaps will, yeah. are going to be soaps. organics. Yeah. Uh, oh, the cleaning fluid. Cleaning yeah, fluid everything, stuff, yeah. yeah. Paper towel. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Organic. And then paper bags. And all we can do, we're going to do it. That's in the charter of uh, Le Biérologue, Le Vinologue. So we try since the beginning to do our best for the local and the environment and the economy and so on. So as a, as a customer of the place, did that appeal? Like, that's an interesting, actually very comedian that that's how this came to be for you. Did that... Um, was that a, an, an attractive element? Did you come here? Well, one, probably because you were across the street, but also... Yeah, though, yeah I called in my yeah. fridge. I didn't have any beer in the fridge. I just crossed the street. The street. Like, there it was. Um, but was that a part of it? Was that kind of like, well, I know... That, it, was like, an, it, was, it was an add-on, if I could say, because good. what I really liked about the store was it, it was, to me, like the first store I really got there and like the fridge is divided by all the, the styles right. and so if you liked let's say stouts like I do so you got in the fridge and all the stouts were there order stouts whatever they were in that area of the fridge I didn't need to I don't know um, look all over the place to find the one I, I wanted to drink right. it was classified it was from the beginning classified. Years ago. and if I if I had to ask a question then like he knew exactly like what I wanted that day so but so at that time to classify the beer by the yeah. styles, it was unusual, I think. Yeah. And it's kind of cool that like this was the neighborhood that you chose. It was like, I assume that seven years ago was a bit of a different place. <laughs> uh, you know, I was touring, I was looking around a few districts in Montreal. There was, years ago, there was not much of uh, specialized stores, beer stores. There were maybe three, four in Montreal, maximum four, maybe. Oh, really? And in here, there was none. And uh, one night we were trying to find uh, a place to rent, and we just parked at the corner here, and we saw the sign "Alloué" for rent. And uh, as soon as I saw that, I said to my uh, the, the other co-founder, I said, "This is it, or that's it. That's the corner. That's the place. The market is just beside. We have a market here named Maison Neuve, okay. Le Marché Maison Neuve, like the Marché at Water, Le Marché Jean Talon." Oh. So yeah. you have food yeah. here, foodies or people who are attracted to eat. Good. Like right? There. Yeah, just out of meter from here. Right. So to be connected with the market, yeah. it's good. So there's a cafe, there's a patisserie, yeah. there's a bierologue, and there's the market all um, together. Convenient. So that yeah. it was, it was. It made sense. Yeah, for me it makes sense from the beginning. That's dope. So as far as like this, the store itself, and like I guess both of you can sort of answer as far as. The taste, and I find this fascinating because as a depreneur that sells all the different beers and all the different styles and breweries, you guys are, are sort of the ones who would have the most direct knowledge of the customer taste profiles and, you know, trend popularity and stuff because you're at the front line selling the beers directly. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on sort of how, you know, over the years since you've been here and since it's been open, have you seen that change I know you spoke to the fact that of course everything started here with the Unibrew stuff and the Belgian styles but that's clearly you know, it's gone way beyond I that I think he's now. more up to date right now being on the floor every day with the people yep. but from the beginning I would say 
there were no experts or no geeks seven years ago. Not much. I was there learning myself because I was a fan of beer. But I didn't know much about beer, but fan, history of beer. And there were not many people who, were, who knew what is a stout, what is a, what is a IPA. Today, it's common to have a conversation with people. They know what is, what is a stout. They know what is an IPA, what's a blanche. They know that. Seven years ago, very few people knew that. And every year, every year, with the, now the social networks, people follow breweries, and there's, uh, and there's uh, wineries or breweries who are very big hits on social networks, as you, as you say. And the media now are finding beer cool and wine, local wine, cool, you know, that's in Ontario. And now it's cool to drink good wine, local wine. It's cool to drink good local beers. Yeah. Now, as you... Well, I can see from here, I can talk from our point of view here because like I, what I've noticed with the <clears throat> with time is that not only like we can see that, you know, it was stouts who were talked about a long, for a long time, then it was like IPAs and still today, like different variations of IPAs. Um, like I looked into like the, the ones we, we picked out and that's the vibe that I get from this place here. But you could get into another beer store and you would get a complete different, different vibe from that neighborhood. Like somewhere else could love, uh, I don't know, box or Schwarzbier and stuff like that. But here, like they are I'm going off. But yeah, technically no, here, that, that, that's what they're, they're looking into, like sessions, uh, low ABVs, that, that's really what they want. They want to, you know, uh, have nice beers. Yes, obviously now it's uh, pills, uh, fruity beers uh, or hoppy ones, but hoppies that are less than 5%. Like, they really want to just grab one, two, three beers and not feel it uh, feel it in your legs, you know? Right. Uh, so I feel like that's, that's the trend right now. That's what we're going to look into, like, for the summer, like, our non-alcoholic things. It's, uh, Interesting. That's fascinating, because I didn't, I never considered the fact that trends could also be neighborhood-based. Yeah. Um, never, that makes a lot of sense. So, pretty much it, gentlemen. That was oh. fantastic. Wow! Where? I know, right? You did well. You guys behaved yourselves. You did, especially. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. I'm be worried about you. <laughs> it's my longest interview ever. Ever? Ever. Nice. Well, you held nice. You did well. Probably two hours. Yeah. Probably. Close to, I think. <laughs> 140. 140? 140? Yeah. So let's talk for 20 minutes. Let's drink. <laughs> Nothing for that. Right? So you're longest. Yeah. 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 Longest yeah. interview. Yeah. Where can uh, the good people watching and listening find Le Beer Love online and in real life? Like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, Facebook. What There's a it? Instagram. It's uh, le, le Bierologue. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, also Le Vinologue that you can hit up on Instagram. Yep. For the wine uh, stuff. Cool. Same with um, Facebook. Yep. Is uh, is le, le, le Bierologue and Le Vinologue. Yep. And um, you have also a site. You have Bierologue.com. Okay. On the, on the web. And but then you get to choose which sites you want to go on. Right. You can say Beer yep. Wine. And what's the address for people? Who come down in real life 4301 Ontario Est Ontario yes. East we are just we are just beside Marché Maisonneuve and 800 meters from the Olympic Stadium and the Biodome which is closed till I think till fall but those tourists that goes there they, they you know they can find us easily so quick walk are, yeah I mean lots of tourists uh, comes here Makes sense. I didn't realize when I walked past Pinot, I'm like, oh damn, it's like a far east. We don't, we're like my lens now. We don't go east of Saint Laurent, generally. You know what I'm saying? So this is scary for us. It's a whole new world. You know, there's, actually a, like, there's, a pit there's actually a thing I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like a we're only 5k <laughs> from Saint Laurent from yeah. here. It's yeah. only five kilometers. It's nothing. It's nothing. nothing. It's nothing. And it's wonderful. It is. Happy I crossed the line. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you for coming. Pleasure. Guys, so thank you so much. Really appreciate hey, it. It was very nice having yeah. you. Thank you. Nice having you. you guys thank are you. awesome. Um, make sure you guys get down. If you enjoyed the episode, mate, boom, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell so you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media at DOS Podcast. Check out the long-form audio so you can hear extraordinarily attractive gentlemen like Uncle Dave and Uncle Paul right here talking about craft beer. That is it, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah.